Hello, this is Dr. Eric Bricker and thank you for watching A Healthcare Z. Today's topic is Dysfunctional Benefits article in the Journal of the American Medical Association. That's right, here at the end of January 2021, the Journal of the American Medical Association, one of the most preeminent medical journals in the world, had an article about employee benefits. That does not normally happen. That is highly unusual. Sure, JAMA will have articles about health insurance and health care policy and articles about Medicare, but this article was specifically about the employer-sponsored health care market and specifically employee benefits. So because we have so many employee benefit professionals and HR folks and CFOs that watch this channel, then we got to talk about this JAMA article because it doesn't happen very frequently. So who is it by? It's by David Scheicher. Arnold Milstein and Kevin Schulman, all from Stanford University. I'm going to tell you a little bit about each of these gentlemen. So, David is a PhD in mathematics and works specifically in policy as it relates to uh, and management as it relates to the Children's Hospital at Stanford. You've got a PhD in mathematics here. Hugely helpful, as we'll talk about in a little bit. Next, Arnold Milstein. If you work in employee benefits, you have to know who Arnold Milstein is because he's like, Famous. Okay, so he's a physician, but he was actually one of the people that founded uh, the Leapfrog Group. He also was one of the original people in the Pacific Business Group on Health, and he's part of what used to be called the Institute of Medicine. Anyway, hugely influential in large corporate, like Fortune 500, self-funded employer plans. So if you don't already know who he is, he's definitely somebody who you should know about. And then lastly, Kevin here, he was a long time, he's a physician as well, he's a long time uh, professor at the Duke University uh, School of Business and has somewhat recently come over to Stanford, but he's hugely prominent as well, has published like hundreds of articles, published dozens and dozens of chapters on healthcare policy and healthcare finance and economics. So these folks are highly prominent in their field, coming from Stanford University. Okay, what do they have to say in JAMA? They go through employer-sponsored health plan statistics that many of you are familiar with, but I want to give you some updated numbers that they share. So. Overall, health care cost for a family on an employer-sponsored insurance plan have gone up by 55% in the last 10 years from 2010 to 2020 to about 20, just over $21,000. So in other words, the total amount per employee that they have to pay for family coverage is $21,000, a 55% in 10 years. Okay. So now specifically for the employee premium contribution, like what's coming out of their paycheck towards that 21,000 has gone up 40% in those same 10 years to $5,600 per employee per year. Okay, that's a lot of money. Let's put that in context. The average household in America on average annually spends $4,600 a year on groceries. So you mean to tell me just the employee contribution for their health insurance is $1,000 more a year than what they pay for food? You want to talk about unsustainable. In no way, shape, or form should health insurance cost, like, does your car insurance cost as much as your annual food bill? Like, there's no way that your insurance should cost this much for your health care. And that's just your contribution. The whole thing's 21 grand. Unreal. Okay, next up. So fine. What you get in return for that 40% increase in premium is worse. What employees have now versus what they had 10 years ago is worse. What do I mean by that? The deductibles have gone up by 110% in the same 10 year period of time to $1,364. Why is that number so important? As many of you are also well aware that the typical American household does not have $1,364 sitting around. They don't have it. In fact, a recent survey that was published in CNBC showed that only 39% of Americans could afford a unexpected $1,000 health care bill. So in other words, 
Well, 1,300 is more than 1,000. So in other words, like less than 39% of Americans can actually afford that. So in other words, the vast majority of Americans cannot afford their deductibles, essentially rendering them uninsured. So here you have a health insurance marketplace that is dysfunctional because it is completely unaffordable. It costs more than food, and the out-of-pocket portion that an employee would have to pay from their deductible, they can't even afford that. So it's, it's not totally useless, but it's pretty close. Okay, so the article goes deeper into the motivations that have created this environment. So, believe it or not, and this has been said by me here on A Healthcare Z, it's been said by a whole bunch of other folks as well, and here you have these Stanford professors saying the exact same thing that increases in healthcare spending, increases in health spending on per prescriptions, increase in spending on hospitals, increase in spending on doctors, increase in spending on medical devices, actually improves insurance financial performance. Yes, at the end of the day, the insurance company actually wants healthcare costs to go up. Why is that? Because of the way that their relationship is structured, they make more money the higher healthcare costs are. One exa perfect example is the 15% medical loss ratio for, uh, for fully insured groups. So the, the, uh, the health insurance companies can make 15%. Well, what's 15% of a larger number? A larger number. So they want healthcare costs to go up because whatever that number is, they get 15% of that. Now, they did a specific analysis where they showed that if healthcare costs increase by 4% per year, then that would translate to an increase in the insurance company's share price of 48% over 10 years. However, if healthcare costs only increase by 2% per year, that would result in the health insurance company's share price only going up by 22% over that same 10 year period of time. So in other words, the faster healthcare costs go up, the faster the stock price of the health insurance company goes up. And of course, all the health insurance executives are paid based upon share price performance. So now, these gentlemen here give a number of recommendations at the end of the article. Here's an interesting one that there have been, I've, anecdotally, I will tell you, there's quite a bit of rumbling in the employee benefit space in regards to this particular recommendation that they're making. So, I'm actually going to read it directly out of the article. Okay. A, as a novel approach to change the market dynamic, the U.S. Department of Labor could publish new regulations that clarify self-insured employer fiduciary responsibility to employees in terms of limits on the annual rate of growth in the amount of income that employees are forced to pay for health care, considering premiums, deductibles, and co-insurance. That's right. So, the Department of, they recommend that the Department of Labor could clarify rules for self-funded employers around their fiduciary responsibility, right? Because when you have a self-funded plan, then the plan sponsors have fiduciary responsibilities to the people who are on the plan, who are the employees. Same thing works for 401k retirement accounts. So if you're the fiduciary of that 401k retirement account, then you have responsibility to the, the recipients of the 401k benefits. It's the same thing with health insurance for a self-funded employer. And so arguably, is there risk for employers in either lapse or neglect of their fiduciary responsibility, given the fact that they've created a benefit plan that their employees cannot afford in terms of out-of-pocket costs, and they cannot afford in terms of premium contribution. So, here you have very prominent people from Stanford University making a very interesting point in one of the most prominent medical journals in the world, and I felt that was worthy to share with all of you here on A Healthcare Z. Thank you for watching.